Hi, I'm Jeremy Sutton and I'm going to give you a little tour of my cracked brush set. This brush set was created with the intention of brushes that can give the sort of look of something that's somewhat old, vintage, antique, that gives a sense of uh, wood grain, dry cracked, dry mud, or even fossils. So that was the intention behind these. I'm working here as I record this video with my draft set. The actual icons are likely to look somewhat different, but the actual brushes will be the same. So let's dive in. I'm in Corel Painter 2019. I've got an image here of me uh, doing some plain air painting on an iPad. And there's 15 variants in the painter version of this brush set. And I'm going to start at the top. They're listed in alphabetical order. And we'll start with aged grain. In terms of setting up my project for working, I'll go to the photo art drawer, tap, tap. And I will go to the clone source panel select current pattern and drag down to embedded image and then it's going to ask what image do you want to embed as a clone source and so I'm going to pick the image you see right now and we'll say OK and what this has done is now created a clone source which is this image so I can always get back to it or reference the colors in it anytime I want. At the moment I'm painting with the selected color so this brush gives this old aged wood grain icon down here my color wheel and saturation value triangle goes gray in the color panel and now what will happen is that I'm going to pick up colors from within the image we're starting to get this sort of texturization so if you actually just want to have a crack vintage photograph look this is one way to work with a photograph even if you're not intending for it to end up as a painting and I'm going to apply a little bit more density of brush mark around the edges. The next one is called Cloudy. As the name suggests, we might want to start up in this cloud area up here. You can really get to see that cloudiness. It's got a little bit of color variability built in. Of course, with all of these brushes, I can use the clone color if I am working from photo reference, and then I start picking up color from the underlying image, which if you recall, I've set to be the photograph itself in the clone source panel. Now this texture, it's actually a brush, but it has a particular uh, sort of textured look to it, is called Cracked. And this one is actually based, believe it or not, on a real life cracked iPhone screen. If you dab, you actually just get the cracks appearing. If I go for the clone color and start applying this texture with the clone color, you can actually get some really interesting things going on. There's color variability built in. So you'll notice that as I apply these brush strokes, we're getting a variety of colors. If you want to hone in on the color more accurately, you can just lower the HSMV, the hue, saturation, and value variability. So this is how I've built up the brush with a lot, in fact, maximum saturation and value variability. And that's what's given this sort of very dark tones and light tones. If I just bring these sliders down, and this is in the color variability panel. So I'm gonna make this brush a little bit smaller using a keyboard shortcut, Option Command on a Mac, Alt Control on a PC. And you'll see here that we're now getting a more precise translation of color. It's given already a very nice texture. Look at that, wow. So you can see here I'm using this brush in the foliage and actually it works really, really nicely uh, for foliage effects. I'm really, really happy with this brush. Let's go to the fader. This one takes an image and gives it that sort of antique faded look. Let's just fade that back a little bit more. So I'm gonna pick a yellowy orange color. You can use this for atmospheric perspective and it's like spraying fade onto your painting almost, spraying mist. Now at this point, because I want to be able to control some of the effects of these brush strokes more finely, I'm actually gonna create a new layer. And I did that by tapping on the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel, which is in the color and layers palette drawer. Just lightly in the top here, I'm gonna go to soft light here to make it more subtle. The filaments is actually the pattern of cracked mud. Let's just zoom in so you can see this. And 
let's pick a part of the image where that could fit in like around here using the clone color and maybe lowering the opacity a bit so it's a little bit more subtle. Did you see that filament appear? Now I do have some fossils up my sleeves and I think they may be appropriate down on the area where the path is. So I'm gonna pick a sort of light brown here. I'm also gonna do this in a layer for the same reason so I can scale back the opacity. If I make a brush stroke, I get multiple areas of this. So let's just have a look, see what this looks like and then let's scale it back. So literally I've got um, trilobites and all sorts of fossils in a, a rock and it's repeating and giving some color variability as I do so. So let's just scale back the opacity on that and also maybe put it into overlay mode and so you can very subtly see the fossils in that pathway using layers and composite methods and the layer opacity. These are all methods by which you can apply things and just control their impact on the image really to a very, very fine extent. Now the brush I've selected here is called Knurled and it's based on knurled wood grain in an antique the chest of drawers. We're gonna work also in a new layer. Again, very subtle, very subtle and specifically so. I, I sort of try to make these brushes so that in, in terms of creating an antique look, they don't just overwhelm a picture and a composition. So for instance, that's a little bit too much. So what we can do here is put that into overlay mode and creates a much more subtle effect. So this brush is called Oily Dab. And one of the reasons I'm calling it Oily Dab is it has an oily effect but I also find it works really well when dabbed. I'm actually gonna drop all, so I'm gonna flatten my image. I'm, I'm happy with the subtlety of these various effects I've put on. So I've been saving stages of this image as a riff uh, file as I go along, and that's very important. Whenever you're working with photos and you have uh, assigned a clone source in the clone panel, it's really important to save your files as a RIF file in Painter, so it preserves all the layer and clone information. Right now I'm gonna click Drop All. This is in the Jeremy Handy Shortcuts, which is part of my paintboxtv.com uh, custom Painter 2019 workspace, giving some really nice weathered texture. And notice with this one, I've not actually used clone color because I'm quite happy just dabbing away and varying the color manually. The quartzite creates this sort of tessellation of shapes that remind me of quartz in a rock. I've put this in a layer as well, so I can just lower the overall opacity, keep it a little bit more subtle. Now Scratchy is actually based on peeling paint. I'm gonna use the clone color here, make that overlay. Ah, look at that. It actually gives a very interesting effect here as well. So Shattered creates this sort of intricate overlapping set of shapes based on a shattered glass. There's some color variability built in here. Let's take that layer and let's work with that in soft light mode. Give something much more subtle, there we go. And this is sinuous, it's a finer set of textures and I'm also working with this at soft light composite method there, so it's a subtle effect. So this variant called Smash, also one that relates to cracks in a glass surface, I'm using here to add texture and detail into my foliage area. So one of the things that you can use these brushes for besides making something look old and vintage, is also just enriching a scene. This brush is called Termites. It's actually based on old wood that's been pockmarked with termites. And you'll see here, giving some interesting effects. So I've ended up putting it into screen composite method. So I experiment with these composite methods all the time and lowering the opacity of that layer to about half. So this final brush is called Wrinkly and it is actually based on the wrinkled skin of an elephant's ear. Can you believe that? It really is actually working with clone color and in overlay mode. And I've finished this off with a, just a little bit of the Sargent brush from the artist's favorite category. 
and done a signature and that is going to be it for this demonstration of some of the ways that you might think about experimenting with the cracked brush set so enjoy and i look forward to seeing what you create cheerio bye happy painting <laughs>